Hey everybody and welcome to episode number two of Uncut. My name is Billy or BK23 on Instagram. And in episode number two, I want to talk about my top five favorite Cuban cigars of 2018. So I'm not a huge fan of countdowns or lists. I do think the Cigar Aficionado Top 25 tends to be more of a paid advertisement than an unbiased review of the best cigars that they released over the, the year. Um, but I thought that I would take this opportunity to tell you a little bit about five of my favorite, more attainable Cuban cigars that are on the market and fairly readily available. I didn't include any Reservas or Grand Reservas or KSA, um, as they certainly are great cigars, but I wanted to make sure that these were cigars that guys who might not have access to some of the more rare sticks uh, would have the opportunity to enjoy. If you're looking for these cigars, please make sure that you're, you're checking out uh, legitimate websites uh, or pages on Instagram like Cigar Shop Lumo, for example. Um, I want to make sure that everyone has the opportunity to try them, but certainly don't want anybody to get taken advantage of. So that said, what goes into picking my top five favorite cigars of the year? I'm a big fan of medium bodied cigars. I love great regional cigars. And as I was thinking about what really stood out to me this year, those were some things that I took into account. Size, flavor profile, the experience that I had while smoking them. And of the hundreds of cigars that I've had the opportunity to smoke this year, there were five that kind of stood head and shoulders above the rest. So with that said, the number five cigar on my list of top five for 2018 would have to be the Monte Cristo Leyenda. So if you have not had the opportunity to try the Monte Cristo Leyenda, I absolutely encourage you to do that. It is the epitome of a beautifully constructed chocolate bomb. Uh, even just the smell from the box is overwhelming. It's a big stick. It is 55 ring gauge by about six and a half inches. The same size as the Monte Cristo 80th, which was also an exceptional stick. Uh, this pairing for me would have to be uh, something like a cappuccino or a port. Although with its size and robust flavor, it could hold up to a, a steak dinner, but I would definitely say um, something a little bit sweeter, something a little bit on the lighter side, maybe a Macallan edition four even. Um, definitely get a tremendous amount of nuttiness, a lot of caramel and coffee, a little bit of leather and hay when you're smoking these, but the uh, prominent feature and flavor of this stick is definitely that cocoa and just amazing coffee flavor that you get. Um, pretty consistent and robust the entire way through. And uh, I would have to say that this is easily um, one of my favorite cigars, obviously in my top five for this year, but even last year when uh, I opened up one of the first boxes, I was blown away at how well they smoked, even, even being as young as they were at the time. Uh, so over the next few episodes, we'll talk about some other regionals, some other great sticks, and we'll work our way down to number one but I certainly encourage you, if you have not, take the time, find this stick, smoke it, and let me know what you think. If you agree or disagree, I'd be curious to hear your comments. Let me know down below, and I'll do my best in uh, episode three to address those as well when we talk about my number four uh, top cigar for 2018. So again, go check out the Monte Cristo Leyenda. Amazing, amazing cigar in the 1935 Linea. There are two other cigars in this linea, the Monte Cristo Dumas, which is I think a 49 ring gauge, and the Maltese, which is a 53, if I'm not mistaken, don't quote me on that. Um, of the three, this one is absolutely by far the best. Uh, so go out and see if you can find them. I'll also post a uh, add-on to this video of the beautiful packaging and the way that these look in the box. Monte Cristo really did an exceptional job of packaging them but also staying true, like I said, to that Monte Cristo DNA. The one thing that you'll notice as you are going through these is that uh, it does have an unusually light wrapper, uh, very Colorado-esque with a ton of beautiful oil uh, on these wrappers. So enjoy them, let me know what you think, and stay tuned for episode number four coming up tomorrow. Have a good day, guys. Thanks, bye.